I'm Ari Schwartz, along with my guest host, Gabe Ibrahim. Welcome to the Windsider Show, where it's all about the W. This episode, we're talking about the Washington Mystics. like our show please consider joining our patreon community for less than a cup of coffee a month you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the w the mystics are magical right now they're in first place and the question on everyone's mind is can anybody beat them gabe welcome to the show glad to finally have you on you've been working the behind the scenes of uh, of windsider for a few months now and now our our official mystics beat reporter uh say Ooh. hi to the folks hello i'm so excited to be here what up? What up? Um, Gabe, this season, I mean, as as anyone who knows me knows, I'm very skeptical of of the Mystics and any success they have. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, to my own fault, many a times. But w- we're talking Mystics, so I figured it would be a good ch- it would be good to bring somebody who constantly throughout the season has yelled at me, dude, you got to stop hating on the Mystics, or dude, <laughs> they're actually really good. Um, to pin against me so we can get a little lively debate going. The Mystics have been freaking dominant so far, my man. Talk to me. When you hear the Washington Mystics and you think 2019, what do you think? Uh, My first thought is obviously Elena Deladon. I mean, she has been phenomenal in every regard. It's like, you know, she does like three or four things a game that just like take your breath away. And like, so last week in in the first half against the fever i think she only had like six points in the first half but all six of the points were incredible buckets just like fadeaways right off the bounce just she's moving the ball so well she's looking for people she's finding outlet passes and honestly i think the most impressive thing about her because we all know how good she is on offense is her defense and her rebounding she's really committed herself on the defense side of the ball to you know getting to her rotations, being in the right place, not getting lost. And she's also doing a great job corralling rebounds. I just think she's really rounded out her game in every regard, both offensively and defensively. So when you think about this season, it's definitely about Elena Deladon. Oh, and to build off that, I mean, I remember after I forgot which game it was, I was in the locker room and somebody was talking to uh, Tasha Cloud about that. And her response was, I mean, pretty blunt, and I hope no one takes offense to this uh, because I think it's pretty honest. You know, teams that Deladon was on in the past, they had to kind of cover her um, defensively. And we see that with a lot of great players. We see that with Diana Taurasi right now. You know, we see that with a variety of other players. But the thing is, is she really spent a lot of time in this Mm offseason honing her skills and focusing on her defense. And it's become quite evident. Um, and, and I think that's been a huge aspect because if you ask anybody, their defense, like last year, even the year before that, their offense was was a powerhouse. But the defense has always been that question mark of, you know, can they become a defense that's really going to do stuff uh, to bring this team to a championship level? You know, and, and that's kind of where we are right now at first place. They're, you know, they've shown stability. Um one of the things that have, have really stood out to me and one of my biggest criticisms of this team early in the season was their inability to close teams out. And we've seen this historically with, with teams that are you know top of the pack but aren't able to get that next level of a championship caliber. Mm-hmm. They, you know, I, I think it was with Seattle one game comes to mind, with the Mercury game comes to mind, uh, possibly even like um, another lower seed team like Chicago or, or, or with someone else where – DC had a nice size lead throughout the whole game. I'm talking double digits. Yep. Come fourth quarter or even maybe third quarter, the last few minutes, these other teams were able to kind of inch it back into single digits. And then, and I remember being at these games and thinking to myself, like, this game's over. And, you know, you're paying attention, you're looking, whatever. And then you look up at the scoreboard and you're like, oh, crap, how did this become a four point game? Yep. Well, and that's and that was such a I think that was a big dichotomy that I noticed in the Seattle games because we were both at that first Seattle game. I was there as a fan and you were you were obviously with the media. But what I saw was just like as soon as the fourth quarter hit, they they got so tight and it was like they were you could see the thought bubbles over their head. Them saying, oh, you know, we can't turn the ball over. We have to protect this lead. They had that 13 point lead. 
And you're right. It, it just evaporated. Like, you know, Tasha Howard got went crazy. Joel Lloyd went crazy. Uh, Jordan Canada had some uh, big plays. And then, you know, boom, it was just gone. And then the rest of the game was them trying to regain some of that, you know, swag, so to speak, that they lost in the fir- in that fourth quarter. And then to come in in the next Seattle game, which was last week, uh, and, you know, I had a different vantage point. I was with the media, but still, you kind of felt that, okay, we're building up to this point in the fourth quarter. They had the same lead in the fourth quarter, 13 points. And then as soon as the fourth quarter started, door was slammed shut. There was no getting back in that game. And I think at some point they went up by 30. And it was just that, – that to me was the moment I said, wow, this is, this is a championship team in the nation's capital. This is the team that, you know – I, I don't see anybody beating them because they are so locked in and locked in in a way that's not dependent on the score. They don't care. They're just going to keep going. They're going to keep coming at you. They're not going to get scared and they're not going to get into that mode where it's like, oh, we have to we have to lock up. We can't we can't turn the ball over. We have to stop taking chances defensively. No, this team is ready to you know push through that and get to the level where they're just putting you away. And that's that to me in the last like three or four games has been the biggest difference. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we even saw it when they played Minnesota recently. And, uh, you know, if what was it with six minutes left in the fourth? It's a four point game, eight point game, something like that. And then they just hit the gas pedal and Minnesota couldn't keep up. And and we're going to talk about Minnesota and some variety of other teams later on. Something I really want to talk about. You and I have been, you know, texting about this, chatting about this, the bench and, and the different lineups that have caused such issues for other teams. I mean, let's talk about some of these bench players. You have Emma Miesemann coming off the bench. You have Ariel Powers coming off the bench. You have Tiana Hawkins coming off the bench. And one of the most underrated players in the league, in my opinion, yes, she's super young um, and hasn't shown up in the same regard that she did last year. But uh, uh, Maisha Hines-Allen is just a bully, a freaking bully. And, And you see sometimes they'll put out that bully lineup where it's like, at one point with Seattle, they were getting bullied around, and they put Maisha in there, you know, throw some bows, knock some people around. Oh yeah, and then come out, and and the, and she fits that role so perfectly. But she also has other elements to her. But talk to me quickly about the bench because I know we have some thoughts about the kind, the, not only the bench, but they have different lineups, and I think they have kind of a closeout lineup um, or a extend the lead lineup, and then they have the like just a variety of lineups yeah. that are so dominant. They have, they have something for everything, like you're saying. I mean, just on the bench, though, you, you look earlier in the season, it was kind of Tiana Hawkins is having these big games. Ariel Powers, she's starting for the moment because Christy Tolliver's out. But Ariel Powers is having all these big games, and Emma comes back, and she's also putting up points. Um, and then, you know, Shatori walker Kimper is also playing really well. So that's we've mentioned everyone on the bench. We hit everyone, but it, it's like – Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, what, about, what about the, the bench player right. slash video analyst? The, the Jackie Moon of uh, yeah. the Washington Mystics, Shea Petty. Or, uh, or and, and maybe this is a little bit out there, but wasn't Michael Jordan at one point like a, an owner, a coach, and a player? Um, Yeah, that was weird. I think he was like, it was like an ownership agreement, so I'm not sure he was an owner. But I was talking to Shea about this, and I was like, hey, Shea, y- y- she liked the Jackie Moon reference, so she's going to have to get into the front office, check off all the boxes. But yeah, okay. no, she's... But she is literally a player coach. This is great. We're in 2019. We haven't seen a player coach in like, I don't know, 40, you know, re- a real player coach in like 40 years. Um, but so she she's also great. And I know. will say I will say in a WNBA time, there was a player coach. I trying to bl- I'm blanking on it. So someone's going to shame me for this. It was either Don <laughs> Staley or it was Cynthia Cooper. Was um, she the head coach? <laughs> Cynthia Cooper at what? It, for anybody who hasn't, go go online and just search Cynthia Cooper, okay? Go to her Wikipedia page. You look at what she's done, and it's so funny because it's like MVP, ch- champion, finals MVP, all-star, first team, this, is and this, and then, like, coach. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> right, it's like – and then she comes back and still plays a few more seasons uh, as a player. So, you know, there's – she can do it all, and 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 she also coached a few other places. I believe um, she is the CAA Coach of the Year in 2010. Um, whatever, we're not going to get into all that. Oh, she she well, back to the does. Mystics bench. Back, back yeah. to the Mystics. Um, back to the Mystics. But yeah, yeah, so like you're saying though, like they have such depth on this team. I think it really starts with Emma. Um, I was talking to her 
last week about, you know, how she's been feeling in the offense. And, you know, I, I think I kind of offended her because I was like, hey, like, you know, it looks like you're, you're really getting to the flow of this offense. And she's like, I've always been comfortable with this offense. And, you know, it's right because she knows all these players. She's been around. Um, I think it's just more that this year's iteration is a little bit different. And she's been um, kind of thrust into this from Eurobasket in a, in a weird time. And now she's like full on ready to go. She's she's moving the ball. She's getting buckets. She's doing she had like this really weird like floating hook shot um, that, you know, it just somehow goes in. And so it starts with her and then powers as well. But yeah, so I, I think that as far as the bench goes, you could have like a full sale change from the bench, from starters to bench. And you, it's really like lossless almost because they're going to face bench players too. So you have such a better bench than everyone else in the league. And all those people are so confident right now. I mean, Sh- Shatori was nailing contested threes like it was nothing. She's in the locker room. She's playing with the bobblehead. They're they're just so loose and having so much fun. I, I think a lot of that does come from the bench. That when you're when you're involving the bench and when you're getting those people minutes and points, you know it, it flows to the rest of the team because everyone's happy to see each other when you come off the floor. Um, and I think Maisha to something we're going to talk about a little bit later. Maisha might be really big in the playoffs because she is really the person when you look at this roster, like, yes, Emma's very, very tall. EDD is also very tall. Latoya is also tall, but none of those, they don't play. Yeah. Yeah. They don't play big. And Maisha can play big with anybody in this league. I don't don't care how tall she's listed at. She can play big with anybody because she is so strong and she can bully people around and she is not going to, you're not going to be able to back her down. So Maisha is going to play a really big role going forward. She's only played 7.2 minutes a game this year, but I, I think that role might uh, be increasing as we, as we head towards the playoffs. Yeah. And, and I will back you up to day's end about Emma, because look, you might, you might be comfortable in it, but, but like, so maybe the wording you used was wrong, but let's be real. Like, Emma was was struggling when she came back. She was here before mm-hmm. she was okay. She came back and she was struggling just in the sense of you might know the offense like the back of your hand, but basketball is five hands laid on top of each yeah. other yeah. and knowing the back of everyone's hands. So you got to be in, in sync with everyone. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think, you know, we've seen this team catapult to that next level of being able to close teams out as we've seen her kind of meld into this team. And I'll be the first to say that, like, one, we had a hot take episode before the season started. I said Mystics wouldn't make the playoffs. I'm wrong. <laughs> Two. Yes. I'm, I'm fine with it. Like, hey, it was a hot take. I knew it, it, if it was if it was a simple take, it wouldn't have been a hot take. So it would have um, been cold take. Exactly. And you know, lukewarm. I don't, lukewarm. lukewarm. Yeah. Um. But no, I mean, like you add to that just how you know she. One of my biggest question marks for this team is, and it speaks a lot to Emma, where Emma, the and uh, sorry for the little history lesson again. When Emma comes to DC or. When Emma really starts to shine in DC is when is then the next offseason EDD comes to DC. Mm-hmm. And I have expressed this. Yes, you know, we can call them the Twin Towers or whatever you want to call them. Like these giants who, to simplify it, have a similar style of play. Obviously, yes, one's a little bit more athletic, one's a little bit better, but they have that similar, like, I'm a big, but I'm not necessarily like a true big. I can shoot the three. I can handle the ball a little bit more than various other people at my size. That being said, like it was a little bit of, okay, are, you know, too much of a good thing. How are you going to use her? Are you going to be able to convince her to come off the bench? Because to me, Latoya Sanders was the reason that last year, this team was able to make that leap to be able to pin somebody next to Deladon and who can be in the paint, but doesn't control the paint and doesn't like, demand that everybody else kind of back off. That's the type of player that they needed where, you know, Sanders can hold her own, but to give the ability to kind of say like, it's, it's a, for a football term. It's like the play. It's like the quarterback option. Like yeah. you have that ability to like, Oh, I got EDD download and we can dominate the paint. You were talking about it earlier. Her rebounding has gone through the roof this year, but to have that ability of, of players that can really play off each other in such a beautiful way I think has really helped this team to have someone who's more of a true center uh, like Sanders uh, in comparison to going up with two players that fill a similar need or a similar role. Right. Talk to me. Talk to me. I know you've been promoting this, this 
EDD Latoya Misamin lineup. Oh, Talk it. to me about why you're such a big fan of it. Well, I just lo- I love the idea that you know you look around and it's just like we're giant because this is not you know in, in basketball we've all been talking about small, small, small. And uh, our our buddy Justin Carter just had a a fantastic article um, for Winsider.com. Check it out uh, about playing nice Hamby. Play. Yeah, great plug, right? Uh, playing Hamby, Asia Wilson, and Liz Cambage together in uh, Vegas. And I think, you know, this the EDD, LaToya, Emma lineup fits way better than those three do because you have EDD, who obviously can score from anywhere, can do anything, can play point guard, can, can do whatever you need her to do on the floor. Then you have LaToya, like you're saying, who she is a true center defensively she is great defensively she can switch out on smalls she can block shots at the rim she can hang out in the paint if you need her to she has great instincts on that end but then offensively she really i think she's most comfortable hanging out in the mid-range and then crashing the boards when there's a board and then like you mentioned emma coming back she does have a more similar style to to elena i I think you know sometimes you, you see those two being a little bit redundant but the way they've used them in the past few games, when they've been running that that sort of giant lineup that I like to I like to call it the giant lineup, is she's been hanging out in the three point line when EDD's inside, and then when EDD comes outside, she'll go inside and post. And you know, it's just been really nice to see how like they've been flowing together and meshing their. And the the bigger point for all three of them is that they're just all such smart players. And I think that's that's kind of like the through line for all of these for all of these mystics players is that they're so smart. They're so have such great basketball IQ that, you know, they can fit in around whatever's on the floor. So to me, I, I love to see that uh, Emma EDD, Latoya lineup because, you know, where they struggle is when there's a big when there's a big, you know, a big, big on the floor. You're, you're you know, you're sort of uh, BGs, you're uh, uh, Liz Campages. Um that that's when they struggle when there's someone posting up. And I think a good counter to that would just be also, Hey, we're also huge. And then when we're huge, you're going to have to come out and guard us at the three point line. You can't just hang out in the paint like you like to. So for, for me, I love that, that lineup. And I think in the playoffs, that could be um, a big tool. And you kind of see coach T is right now, just like trying throwing stuff against the wall because they can't miss. So now is the time to try to try the different lineups. And I think he's just really trying to figure out how we can mesh everyone together. And I, I think it's going great. And every single lineup they've tried has been fantastic. Something we have to talk about uh, on this episode, something that's a hot topic and might get us some flack, but you know us, we don't, we don't shy away from. We love the flack. Yeah. Right. Give it I'm, to me. Give me a flat jacket. Um <laughs> In my opinion, and feel free to disagree, I'd appreciate if you disagree, this team is one injury, one specific Mm -hmm. injury away from the biggest letdown in DC sports history. And I'll and I'll say that because this team has been so was was so good last year. Has been so good, so dominant this year, as we've talked about, so magical, if you were. Mm -hmm. But what I have seen and maybe I'm just too into, you know, like what's happened before and not what's going to happen or what's happened currently. But when Deladon is out, she had her concussion and her broken nose earlier in the season. Mm-hmm. Before that uh, first game of the season, she was still doing some slight recovery with the knee injury. When Deladon's out, this team, I'm not talking about, you know, the skill level of this team. I'm not right. throwing any shade at that. What I'm throwing shade at is the fact that this team seems to kind of forget who they are and lose their confidence the moment delhi has gone. Mm-hmm. And I have not seen any sort of inkling of proof that this team... Now, if you're asking me now, the way this team's playing, ED is completely healthy. Can they win a championship? Yes. And I will say that to the end of the depths. This team, if they stay healthy, looks poised to win a championship. Yes, a lot of that has to do with the makeup of the current league injuries included, but not to take away from this team. If they stay healthy, this is a dominant first place team that can win a championship. Sure. Um, talk, I mean, do you think that it's the, I, am I overreacting? Is it, is it a serious concern no. that, you know, they bubble wrap Deladon for the rest of the season or they pull her for the rest of the season <laughs> because they've already secured the playoffs? I mean, those are things that we would be talking about right now. If we're, to, you know, does Tom Brady sit, bef- you know, yeah, Tom's yeah. really old. Is he going to sit? Is, 
is so-and-so going to sit? Um, is Megan Rapino going to sit for this game because they know that they're going to make it to the finals? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, so I, as far as her sitting, that's just not like someone asked Coach T about, you know, well, what are, you, what are your thoughts about the, you know, how are you guys mo- getting motivated? And, she, and he was like, well, we're only one game up for the one seed. And they are dead set on getting that one seed because they want home court throughout. They want the double buy. They want it all. They, they want to stamp this season and say, this is the Washington Mystic season. So she's not going to sit. And, you know, I do. All right. So there's there's a, a level of degree here where I think, you know, we agree in one part, but we don't agree in the other. So I agree that if Elena goes down and is out for, you know, multiple games, if she's out for multiple games in a playoff series, I don't think this team can win. And I, I don't think that's like a controversial opinion. Natasha Cloud said it uh, last year. When when Elena went down, she said, "We can't win a game. We can't win a series without her. We can't win a game without her." And um, you know, she she's right. I I think if she if Elena is not playing whatsoever, this team is just you know they they if we take out Elena Deladon from this team, they probably make the playoffs, but they're probably not that good. So that's where I stand as far as her missing time. Now, as far as she if she misses one game. Or if she's kind of hobbled like she was in the finals last year, um, I think that's a different story to me because of what we were talking about with Emma. Emma being integrated into this team and finding her role, it's the same, it's the thing we were just saying. She's similar to ADD. She can play a similar role. She can grab those boards on the defensive glass. She can play really well offensively. You won't have to change the system too much to fit around her because she does a lot of the same things as EDD does. Now, the the issue is this year, because of another thing we were talking about, is defensively, what do you do with Elena? So, because Emma, you know, Emma's, Emma's a great player, but Emma's strength is not on that side of the, of the floor. So, you know, that would be the concern for me. But I think, you know, Natasha is really locked in this year. Uh, Christy, before she was injured, also super locked in. I think Ariel Atkins, to me, I, I also have watched her a lot more than, you know, at any other player in the league. But to me, she's the defense player of the year because she is just so – she's been everywhere lately. She has been playing uh, phenomenal basketball on that end and giving them a lot offensively. And I think, you know, last year what we saw was EDD goes down, she's hobbled, and, you know, Natasha Cloud went into that that hole, that, that the idea that, you know, she locked up. And she couldn't play her game and it affected everyone. I don't think that is going to happen this year because of, because of the bench, because of Natasha's growth, and because Emma is there to replace whatever she can offensively. So if she if Elena has to miss one game, or if she's just a little bit hobbled and she can only play, you know, let's let's say she can only play like 20 minutes a game or 25 minutes a game rather than 30, you know, I think they can weather that storm. And, and I, I don't think it's going to be a replay of last year's finals. I think they can weather that storm, win a game, win a series, uh, even if EDD is not 100%. So that's that's where I stand on it. I, I hear that. I, I disagree respectfully. But, um, I mean, I, I personally, I think if EDD is not 100%, like, can't go for a – because I my fear is that, that mindset um, of kind of she gets out there, she's not 100%. And the team tries to rally around her and and work, and everybody kind of tries to step up and do a little bit more to fill that gap, and it just doesn't work. Um, but that, again, that's my take, and I'll probably be proven wrong, like I have been about the Mystics all year. Um, before we move on to can anybody beat the team, uh, something that, and, and we're gonna get into this in another episode that's coming shortly to you. You know what? Screw it. I'll give you. It's gonna be. We got a hot take episode hot coming. Hot takes. Um, a little teaser for the hot take. And again, probably going to be wrong. Uh, and you know what? I'm not even going to give the hot take. I'm just going to put this question out there. When is Coach T going to win a championship? He's one of the most winning coaches in basketball, mm-hmm. but he has yet to win a championship. He's been there. I think he's 0 for 4. Maybe he's 0 for 3. Um, he's had a plethora of opportunities with a ridiculous, talented roster. At what point do we start to question him versus – you know, get, like, look, we don't think about the losers. We don't talk about the teams that were in second or third place. What we do talk about is who won the championship. So we're going to dive into that a little bit more in a hot take yeah. episode. My, um, my answer, though, 
is no, yeah. I'm not questioning Coach T. Uh, Coach T is amazing. He's one of the best coaches ever. And I think, you know, we put so much stock into the championship that, you know, it kind of obscures everything else. But it, it's not just like the wins with Coach T. It's the development and the scouting. And he is just wonderful at that. NBA, college, WNBA level, whatever it is, he is fantastic at that. So to me, uh, you know, winning three games, three out of five games is not changing that for me. No. We'll, we'll, yeah, no. And, and look, I, I completely hear that. I, I just feel like this is a topic that needs to oh, be yeah. discussed. And, and, and I agree. I mean, Mystics and a few other teams are the only teams in this league that really focus on player development mm-hmm. and really put the time in to grow their players. Um, and one of those things, I mean, like, all right, I'll, I'll give it up, you know, or I'll give a little bit more of it up. My big question that's always rattling in my brain is, is he a better coach or a better GM? Mm. Because that, and the, and that's the question that I get to knowing um, kind of his history uh, and ability of, okay, look at his draft history. Okay. Look at his championship history. Okay. Look at this, look at that. And that's the question that constantly pops up into my head. Is he more, is he one of the greatest GMs in league history or is he one of the greatest coaches in league history or is he both? And it's possible he's both. And I'm just a complete moron. <laughs> um, but all right, well, we'll get into that later. Let's, let's talk about, one. yeah, yeah, right. Let's save that one. Let's talk about this. Can anybody beat the mystics? And, and to be clear, we're talking about, we're not talking about any given Sunday. You know, we're talking about playoffs. We're talking about finals, best, best of five series type stuff. Is there a team that can withstand the the juggernaut that currently is the Washington Mystics. Um, I'll let you pick. We got a few teams on the list. I'll let you talk about one team first, Gabe. Go. Okay. Um, well, I so let me preface this. I don't think so. Uh, again, I watch the Mystics all the time. I've been living here for three years. This is the team I follow. Like this is the this is the team I'm in tune to. So no, I, I if they are playing like this, there's no one that can beat them. But but to the first team that comes to mind as the team that can beat the Mystics in the finals or in the playoffs is the Las Vegas, Las Vegas Aces. Uh, they are fantastic. I mean, they have everything you want in a team. They have, obviously, uh, Kayla McBride is a stone cold killer. I do not ever want to see Kayla McBride playing against any of my teams in any major sporting event because she'll figure out a way to beat us. Um, so she, she's a monster. Hamby is going to win six women of the year, like by a landslide probably. Um, and then, you know, the, Biggest, well, unless she ends up starting too many. I think uh, I think Ben Dahl had a tweet about that, that she is now, if she doesn't start the rest of the way, she has the same number as John Quell did when she won 6-1. So that, okay. that'll, that'll work. But we don't know. She, you know Shout, she never out Shout out to our boy Ben Dahl. Shout out to our boy Ben Dahl. But yeah, so the Aces, though, the, the reason I really think that they are a great matchup um, for the Mystics is because they can just bludgeon you inside. I mean, they have they have Liz Cambage, who is a bully among bullies. Uh, I really – and we're all we're obviously – we're only talking about her on-court personality. We don't have to talk about their – this doesn't make sense, their off-court personalities. But on-court, she is a bully, man. She is a beast out there. And I think uh, between her and Asia, they can kind of just pound somebody inside. And I think the Mystics – are particularly susceptible to it. As far as uh, on synergy, they are the ninth uh, best out of out of twelve. Ninth best uh, defense against post ups. So to me, that's where you get them. Uh, I think the Aces with Lambier as a coach. Lambier is going to pound that rock inside all game long. He is never going to take a break from it. And I think that's how you beat the Mystics is just to bully them and you know honestly just try to take a blunt force object and hit him with it as many times as you can. And that is what the Aces do. And that's why I think, for me, they're the top team. They're the one that, if I'm the Mystics, I'm, I'm worried about the Aces. We have to figure out some, some way to get the ball out of those two bigs' hands. Well, yeah, and it would be a throwback to uh, 2016, 2017, uh, when Minnesota came in. First year with EDD, team's looking good, whatever. And, and, this, and, and again, this is why we talked about it early. EDD being a, um, you know a force in the paint more these days, you know, getting rebounds more defensively. They have consistently, when they don't win the rebounds, that has been a huge issue. Paint, the paint presence has always been an issue for this team. They live and die by the three. We've seen that throughout many years um, and, and a little bit less this year, but still it, it's a concern. I'm going to take the next team and I'm going to throw a star studded 
movie star of a team, the LA Sparks out there. And the reason is, is because depth. I know everyone tweets about it. Um, our pal uh, with the LA Sparks, Eli Horowitz, has, has made remarks of, I don't think this team has seen um, all 12 roster spots active for a game yet this season, which is mind boggling. I mean, a week ago, Rachel and I do an episode with Chelsea Gray. You should check it out. It's really insightful on her. But one of the things that we talked about is this is one of the most dangerous teams in the league. A week later, they're a little bit less dangerous. They're they're not as scary. Um, but they're finally getting all their players back. They're getting that full roster back. What are we going to see? Then you talk about the matchups. And, and that's kind of how my mind works. You know, roster, then matchups, then history, then kind of gut. And when you talk about the matchups, the main matchup I look at is Candace Parker or Elena Dalda. Um, I think that's a huge, huge matchup. Both players are the epitome of the flex, of the epitome of modern basketball, where they can play, you know, this position, this position. I will say handles wise, I would put my money on Candace Parker. Obviously, this season, I think you'd be dumb to not put your money on EDD. Um, but historically, Candace Parker has gotten the best of Lena Deladon. And my gut still says Washington, but... You know, having Shanae, having Vidiva off the bench, Kalani Brown, um, uh, Neka, uh, the better Agumake, um, <laughs> and all, all of these little things. And that's not even a that's not even a shot. No, like, a- um, and they're both amazing. It's just you know one has to be a little bit better. Although I would love to see them play some one on one. But we'll, we'll get back I'm, to that. I'm later. sure they have um, played many many games one on. I know, but like, why has nobody? Like, everyone just talks about sister sister. Oh, they're playing together. Why has nobody taken that interview to the next level with a little one-on-one with some sister smack talk? Oh, I love um, that. So, right? uh, so do you think, yeah, I, I, do you think LA yeah. of all, you know, all the teams in the league were, are, is LA the most talented? Ooh. I, I think I mean, so. It's kind of like, you know, they have, they have I, four. Yes. <laughs> they're, they're, yes. In the sense of, look, I mean, you got Chelsea Gray who, should be guard of the year in many regards. Mm-hmm. Um, you got Elena Beard, who's historically one of the best, if not the best defensive players in mm-hmm. league history. You have TRP who has given the green light to shoot the three as much as she wants. And her defense is yeah. just skyrocket. Alexis, like they, they, they have the most star power. That's not even a question. Right. right. Um, but I do question, you know, when you get down to the, the, you know, n- like 10, 11, 12 roster spots, how they match up against other players. I think, you know, if you take the old players and you kind of just cryo froze them for a year and you let the young players get a couple more years of, of, of games under them, then yes. Um, okay. Right now, I mean, if they're not first, they're tied for first, but you know, that, that it's, it, it's tough to say. I would have to like legit look at every roster and be like, they beat, they beat. like, it would be rock, paper, scissors. It would be a rock, paper, scissors tournament. If you ask me. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? It's going to be fun. I'm sorry. This was just a random thought. But yeah. it's going to be really fun when we have 2K and we can just like, we can immediately just go and like play these games out as ha- like whatever we want. But that's that oh, was just yeah. a random thought that popped into my head. Like, I'm really excited to just do that because it's it's a great basketball simulator. I know you, you haven't played a lot of 2K, but for people who have no, no, stuff. I- no, I mean, I haven't played 2K in years, but I will say like, hey, I used to be that guy who would call into the sports talk radio and be like, I just... With Madden 1994, <laughs> I took the Minnesota Vikings to five championships. Denny Green, how come you haven't been able to do that? Um, and I cannot wait for us to be able to do that with the W. Let's move on to the next team, and I'll let you take the next team also. Uh, okay, so my next team is a bit off the board um, because they, they've kind of been like faltering this year. But I really think Phoenix is a great matchup for uh the mystics in particular and we saw that play out um i want to say it was what it was earlier this month yeah so uh august 4th yeah so they just you know they beat the they beat the brakes off the mystics and it was kind of the first time you saw a team just completely give it to the mystics I, i think it really again you need a huge post presence who's the biggest post presence in this league it's bg mm-hmm. and bg is terrifying to to anybody again on court versus not off court she seems like a very sweet nice person um but on court 
I never, like, she is going to bully you. She's going to give it to you down low, and she's going to talk to you about it. And then defensively, you know, she just kind of hangs out there in the post, and that's going to be killer to um, this offense of the Mystics that really loves to get to the rim. And then you have Dewana Bonner, who's having a tremendous season, and she's been she's been really good. And I, I think, you know, uh, it's kind of been up and down more than her points per game would suggest because she's kind of – had some defensive lapses. She's kind of had some quiet games offensively. And then Leilani Mitchell, uh, she's up there in the most improved list, I think. Uh, so if Diana Taurasi can play, and she's medically cleared now, suspended for the most baller reason, because she got suspended while she was injured. Um, Not only that, she also got a tech while she was injured. Yes. Like, and, and, and I was more hoping that instead of suspending her, they would have just given her a technical and then like the double tech or whatever would have caused her to be suspended for a game or what like yeah. i would have liked it more so instead of just like oh you're suspended like it would have been funnier for her. but yeah so if dt can come back and play uh i think that's a that's the matchup that you know it'd be outside of the aces for me it goes aces mercury uh sparks because I'm, I'm with you on the sparks but uh, i put the the mercury second because if dt comes back uh, we're talking about the best clutch performer in league history. Um, and I just don't know how that would even look because we haven't seen DT all year. So if DK, DT can come back, let's say she's 70%, that's a team that if they can get to the matchup with the Mystics, can really give it to, uh, can really give it to DC, I, I think can stop them in their tracks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the last team that I want to touch on just very briefly, because honestly, this team, I don't think necessarily needs a lot, a lot of uh, d- description of why they can. Uh, last year, we saw two of the most exciting games in the season. There was like two, Washington and Connecticut yeah. just battle it out. And they are two high powered offenses mm-hmm. um, that sometimes go stagnant. But they're teams that have been around together. They're teams that have flexibility in positions and can shoot like crazy um, I have to, you know, John Quill Jones, who's up there for MVP race, you know, uh, the, the starting five of Connecticut is super impressive. The real question I think is when it comes down to their depth. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really where I start to question because they have a lot of players that either never lived up to the hype or have lived up to their, their own hype, but are just, you know, middle of the pack or yeah. middle of the pack, higher players. When you talk about DC though, they really have that depth of players who know what their position is, know what they have to do and are laser focused on doing that. Um, I'd say out of the four, this is going to sound so weird, but I have the least confidence in Connecticut yeah. pulling off a win, um, which is really weird based on the standings now and how this team has played over the, you know, the past few years. Yeah. Talk to me very briefly, your thoughts on Connecticut. I, I love Connecticut. I think they're an excellent team. I mean, Courtney Williams has been like one of my favorite players to watch over the past few She's years. So She's so much fun, but you know, it's just when you look at the teams, it's like, well, we have a, the mystics and the sun have a lot of the same personnel. Um, and just like the mystics depth is better. Uh, I think, you know, you, you're kind of looking at a similar John Quell and EDD. I think John Quell is a little bit more of a, of a bigs big, um, but she's definitely, you know, sort of that same futuristic big mold where, where she shoots, she kind of plays outside. And then, you know, I just don't trust their offense because it takes so many long twos and they take so many just tough shots and Court, Courtney's great at making them. So is Jasmine. Uh, and Alyssa has been fantastic all year. But just that matchup for them is going to be really tough. And it, I think the you could see it, right? Like you could see a game or two where the Sun beat the Mystics uh, with, you know, if Shakina goes off, right? Shakina can go off. She hits a bunch of threes and, and it's over. You know, we go home. But I just don't, you know, projecting them at their sort of normal level, I would say the Sun and the Mystics are they're just similar teams and the Mystics have that better bench, like you were saying. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Is there any final notes you want to throw, uh, throw at the folks, kind of blow their mind? Well, I just can't believe you didn't you didn't say the links. That that was like, oh, all right, we're, we're going we're going to Minnesota. He was just there this weekend. We got to talk about the links. 
I, my thing is, and 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 this is all honesty, and the, and and I might get some flack for this. Maybe Coach Reeve is going to hate me for this. Maybe Sill's going to no, Sill wouldn't because she's like the nicest kind yeah. of person ever. Um, my issue with the links is the biggest thing that I've noticed this season is even last year when the team just couldn't make shots, really struggled to be a uh, one the team that we know is the Minnesota Lynx. And prop, prop, first of all, let me just say this, as I say every time I talk about them, props to Cheryl Reeve, GM, oh, for yeah. getting this roster together. This roster is tenfold. In my, and I, one of my hot take episodes, I said, this team is going to be better than the team last year. And I fully believe they are. That like last year's Lynx, even with Maya and all that, would lose to this year's Lynx, um, even with the injuries. That's That's my personal opinion. The thing that has become most evident, this team, I have so much more confidence offensively in them. Defensively, you know, they, they really ebbs and flows. The, imba- the 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 feeds to Sill in the paint. We can talk about how Sill is getting beaten up. All the bigs are getting beaten up in the paint this year, and it's been a historic thing in the league. But the thing that really has opened my eyes is how good Lindsay, Simone, uh, Maya, and Rebecca are and even the bench players from before about getting the ball into Sill in those tight spaces, knowing, oh, she likes it over this shoulder, and, oh, she has a little mm-hmm. bit more length on this side, and, and all those little details that you get from playing with someone for so long, and props to them, they were able to do it when Sill joined them halfway through a season for that championship run. That's been the thing where, like, it started to hamper, and I think some people might question how good Sill really is, or was it that she was surrounded by so many people? And for me, I just really think it's their inability to feed Sill properly has just harpooned this team. Yes. No, and I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, that, but my, if they can figure that out a little bit, and, it, you know, to me, it's just looking at this roster, they don't have the horses this year because I love, I love Nafisa. To me, you know, this is another thing that we can talk about later, but Nafisa is rookie of the year. Um, but, you know, it's just they don't have, all the horses, and like you're saying, you're going to need to get the ball to Sill uh, in, in a variety of creative ways, and it's just, you know, that's not that's not the team's mo this year. So I just don't think they have enough talent. But I do want to give them I do want to give them a lot of credit because, like you're saying, I mean, this is this is a really tough situation. Cheryl Reeve has put this team together fantastically, and I think Odyssey Sims is great. I love their team. I love them going forward. But yeah, I just wanted to mention them because hey. You you tell me, uh, Sill has Syl, Sylvia Fowles can have like a thirty point game, or Simone Augustus can go off, and that's terrifying to any team, especially the Mystics who would have trouble uh, ding up Sill. Yeah, no, totally. Hey, we believe the players of the W and its community deserve the same in depth analysis and respect that men's sports receive on a daily basis. Please consider joining our Patreon community to help support us in the hard work that we do. See on the flip side where it's all about the W.